Let's take a look at quite possibly the easiest way to rotoscope anything in After Effects in just a few clicks. Tip tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at the new Roto Brush 2.0 which is a really great and simple way to rotoscope um, video and add things like text behind images or other visual effects like that. Um, you can do it in just a few clicks so we're going to jump right in and hopefully this will be a nice quick tutorial for you guys. Okay, so here we are inside After Effects, and as you can see, we've got a pretty simple scene here, but um, there are some complex um, images and things going on. We've got an arm of the lady here that separates from her body, and it's actually neatly masked out everything inside that gap, as well as some slightly complicated hair, which you can see masks quite well uh, as well. So you can do this with really basically any footage now. It really is that powerful. All I've got here is just my footage that I'm gonna right click and create a new composition from that selection. And I'm just going to choose just a few seconds of the clip just so that we're not here forever. Maybe uh, something like that much. Two seconds to just after five seconds. I'm going to trim my composition so we're just working with this short amount of footage. You'll notice I chose a point where there is no gap between her arm, there is a small gap between her arm, and there is a point where our arm comes completely away from the body. Okay, so you, to choose the point where you want to start rotoscoping, um, you want to make sure that everything you want to rotoscope is on screen. You know, if your camera is moving and some parts go off screen, you want to make sure the point where you start, everything is off screen. And you also want to make sure that there's a point where if there's a hole, then you've got that as well. Just select your new Roto brush tool from the top here. Double click your layer to go on into the footage of that layer. And you'll notice that um, you've got this kind of clipped time zone here. And you're just going to click and drag a line over your character. Uh, and that's going to create the first section of rotoscoping. First thing I like to do is go to the trim section here and just trim the rotoscope area to the only section of the footage that we're going to be using, just saves a bit of time. And it's just a case of clicking and dragging and it will um, use its new machine learning engine to accurately cut out your um, character from the background. Now you'll notice that if you do this pretty quickly, there's some points which um, might like jump over, but obviously, honestly, at this point, I don't really care about this bottom line because I know my text isn't going to go there, but you can hold alt and click and drag to remove sections and to add additional sections it's just left click and drag as well. Once you've got an outline that you're roughly happy with, just press the space bar to play forward. You'll notice that you've got this green dot here where you started and it's now going to rotoscope forward this entire time. And for some reason it has not done my alignment there. So I'll just redo that. So you can notice already this is going pretty well. Uh, it brings back gaps and this is the most impressive bit. It'll even analyze this box in the front. That's so clever, especially if you consider how similar in color all of these elements are. It will then go backwards from your point until it's rendered it the entire clip. And as you can see, that's already a pretty good um, sort of clipping there. But if you want to refine it a little bit, you can just drag through, find points where you're not particularly happy. Like there's a little bit of dancing on her hair here. So let's fix that. You can just go through, alt click and drag that out. It will have to go through and re-render some of these frames. As you can see by this bar coming up here, the rotor brush, as it tries to reanalyze what it should or shouldn't include from that selection. So we're just going to go through and just tidy up the edges of the hair here. But you can see already that this is so much quicker than what we had before. Um, so it's going to try and analyze all those points in between. Even just me going through and tidying up this piece of hair until I'm happy with it much quicker than any previous road scoping. It's going to re-analyze re all of this, which is great. And then if you go back to your main composition, bam, suddenly the background is gone. Now let's talk a little bit about refinement because there's some things here I'd like to refine. Um, for example, if you notice something that you do want to get rid of again, you can just go back and neaten something up. And it might take a few clicks to get the perfect outline that you want, but then obviously when you go back, it's going to look a lot better. So you can see there's a little bit of a halo around our character still. So let's fix that using some of these settings here. You might, for example, reduce the chatter, which is going to simplify your overall outline. You can increase the feather, which is obvious what that does. So maybe I'll increase that to say maybe eight or nine. And the contrast is going to basically be the chunkiness of your edge. You'll see if I drag up this um, contrast here, the edge is going to be very um, pixelated and chunky. But if I take this all the way down to say 20%, that's going to reduce the blur a little bit. Once you've got something vaguely happy here, the last two th settings to turn on are use motion blur and decontaminate edge colors, which is really going to come through and 
de-chunk everything for you, okay? So now you'll notice that we can scrub through our footage and we've got a cutout character. Just gonna duplicate that layer, go to the layer underneath, turn off the rotor brush. You can just delete it if that's easier. Uh, and then just add some text into your scene. Roto brush is cool. Okay. I'm going to scale this up, pop it in the center of my footage here, turn off caps lock, <laughs> and just drag that below. Voila, look at that. So it's going to um, repropagate because we changed a few settings. So we'll just briefly wait for that to go through. It's got to fix a few of the frames and it'll start rendering. Oh, hey, <laughs> didn't see you there. I was just enjoying some coffee whilst I was browsing all the merchandise that is available at youtube.com slash tip slash store. You can get exclusive items such as hoodies, t-shirts, and pencil cases. There's even a hoodie for your pet dog now, if you'd like to dress up your dog in some tip tuck merchandise. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, great, it's finished rendering, and there we go, we've got Rotor Brush is cool. Um, as you can see, there's a few bits here which have glitched out, uh, a couple of frames where the, the hair doesn't sort of act as expected, but that's okay, you can just go back into your layer properties by double clicking, selecting your Rotor Brush tool, and it will just say, warning, it can't do it until it's finished rendering, and then it will reactivate your Rotor Brush, and you can just come through and tidy that up as expected. But that's really all there is to it. So there you go, Rotor Brush 2.0. If you like this tutorial, make sure you consider becoming a member of the Tip Tut Zone for exclusive perks such as shout outs at the end of each video, which you're about to see, and exclusive and personal design feedback every single month. So thank you very much, everybody, and I'll see you next time on Tip Tut. I'd like to say a massive thank you to my level two and above members, Unknown Ghosts, WN62, Anonymous, Brew Draws, Mel M. Hoover, Maybe Sharma, Ralika M, Mun336, Ian Costello, and Dushyant Singe. Thank you very much, you guys. You guys are keeping the lights on. for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.